welcome to my channel. This is Ellen Camille Trent. Today it's Friday, so let's do Floral Friday. And we're going to do some loose fun flor florals in real time. So grab your brushes. I'm going to be grabbing some oval brushes, some that are pointier, some that are not so pointy like this one, Princeton Select. This is uh, a Robert Simmons Sapphire half inch. And then I've got the Princeton Neptune that's oval, it's really pointy. And we're going to play around. If you don't have them, use a different brush. But anyway, we're going to start now. Also, you want to get your colors um, fairly watery. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of water in these, these pinks and reds and this bright pink. And over here, you can't see my yellow, but I have a lot of water in the yellow. And I'm going to start off doing the flower first in the center. Sometimes I can do the outside and then the inside. So this time I'm going to do the, the inside. So I have the oval brush on the side. Gonna loose, push out some strokes like this. Go in a little closer, excuse me, so you can see. Oh, lighting gets really kind of tricky. Strokes like that. And do another one over here. back so you can see like that you get the idea and I'll do another one over here go a little closer again so you can see so I'm just making like lines pushing it out a little on the side here and then just taking the tip and just dabbing it on the end so you see like those it's almost like the tip of a um, lilies Anyway, we're going to make some kind of poppy flower today. So I rinse that off, and the same brush, I'm grabbing this pinkish orange, kind of a coral color. And this is a Arches paper. This is 100% cotton. So when you're working with cotton paper, it's very thirsty. I keep adding water. I'm stroking it inward, out in. Very thirsty. What I mean by that is, you're not going to see like some of the other videos I have where it bleeds into the into the uh, color and it makes that whoosh effect um, because it's thirsty. The paper soaks it up like a paper towel. And this is a more serious kind of paper. This is not cheap. Um, you can get these pads. This is a Arches cold press um, cotton paper pad. See how I was just working the strokes inward, not touching the yellow, almost touching the yellow. You can get like a Michael's coupon. Same thing with this one. Working upward, I'm, gonna, I'm actually want it looser, so I'm adding more water to it. You can get them, like I said, at Michael's. Use a coupon. They don't carry a lot of sizes. They carry like one size, which I think this one is like the 10 by 15 or 11 by 15. You would need to go or order from places like Dick Blick. Or Jerry's Autorama. And let's do this one. Same premise. You're taking this, pushing it inward, leaving a space so it looks more like kind of like a poppy. Now it's kind of flat still, it's drying. I don't know if you can, it's still a little wet, so adding layers would not be a good time to do that right now. So while that's kind of drying and you want to add layers later, you can add some more flowers this way. Now now I'm going to do it without the, 
the center because these are just going to be like buds. Sometimes I do the bud first, sometimes I do the buds after I have the stems in there. Now I'm going to pick up the Prince and Neptune brush with a point here tip because I'm going to do some leaves and stems and that's more conducive for that. Getting a very dark green color and again holding it like a pencil on its side like I showed you in some other videos. Pulling it down. And this is where the fun begins when you push down and pull up. Remember I showed you that? Push down, pull up. If you want those type of leaves. I don't think this value is dark enough. So I'll add in some more. Oh look, see? A little bleeding there going on because it was next to the flower. And you know what? So what? It's kind of a nice happy accident. And now I'm mixing a different variation color. Same brush. Here I'm just having fun just throwing the leaves out this way. Again, I'll do another tone, more yellow in it. Mixing it up right now. And this time I'm gonna change the brush out. I'm gonna use this Filbert Princeton tiny little number eight oval. Let's see what this one makes. I've showed you before how it makes those little teeny little um, leaves, but let's try it in a longer sense. This is real time, so I'm just doing this randomly. I have no plan. And sometimes the no plan is the way to go. Now I'm doing some stem work. As you can see up here. And then we'll add some flowers to that. Grab another different brush. This is the Princeton Select Half Inch Oval Mop. It's a mop. Let's see what this mop can do. <laughs> Who likes the mop? It's a little brighter pink. Look at that. A little too bright. Let's tone you down a bit. Let's mop it up. That's what happens when you work with these Dr. Martin sometimes. They're intense and you can't get that color up. So it's looking a little too bobbly, which is fine. I'm going to go back in with that little Princeton Filbert brush. Put some lines around it because I feel like in nature that would not look normal. And you can play around with this. You don't have to use the same kind of flowers, you don't have to use the same kind of colors. You really just when you look at tutorials online, different learning how they do the strokes, you know, things like that. You really just don't want to be copying people. I get this all the time on Instagram, like I see people look at my videos, which is nice, and they copy it and show it to me, 
I'm like, that's great, except that it's not yours. It's mine. You copied it. So that's fine, but you can't sell it. You can't do anything with it. So the best thing is to get the, uh, the idea of how I do the composition, how I do strokes, and then make it your own. It's your own colors, your own strokes. And you just play around. Obviously, if you're copying for personal reasons, no big deal. But you can't sell it. That's a new new. That's called copyright infringement. <laughs> Not too many people understand that. So here I'm playing with the strokes and the lines. It's getting a little crowded. We need to do something over here. Now I'm changing up the brush again. I'm using a Princeton Elite number eight. I need to get another leaf. A better tone. See, even I can screw things up. The brush is not cooperating. Yes, I will blame it on the brush. Like I said, you want to get these tones kind of dark towards the flower. See, I'm just playing around. There is no particular rhyme or reason to everything. Why I say get it cl darker close to the flower, because it needs to have some depth. You know that it's not going to be light because it's going to have shadow under the flower. Unless your flowers are alien flowers that I don't know about. And you want different tones. You want to give that dramatic effect. You want to play around. Now, we can go back into that first press I was using. Okay, here it is. The flowers, because they're dry, and add some layers. Because it looks too flat. I mean, you could have this look if you wanted it. But I personally want to add some. More tones. You can work from the inside outward or the outside inward. Or you can do both. Like I just did there. just got to play around with it. Take color away, add it. Oh, real time. Just hold on. Okay, we're back to adding colors. I just edited out the telephone ringing. See, I'm making this real time. You know the telephone's ringing and it's real time. And so I'm going from the inside out. And I'll add some on the top coming down in sections. You can even add lines because if you want it to really look like a poppy, they would have lines. go. 
So I'm going to be doing this series on Fridays, four Fridays, mini Mondays. Have you noticed on my Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, that I do a lot of mini paintings. And they're so popular that I have to keep continuing them. So Mondays on Instagram and YouTube, I will be posting mini tutorials, mini paintings. Let's just create that mini movement. So here I'm adding really dark red in the center, close to the yellow. Just dabbing it, because that's already wet. And let it bleed out. The bleed would be different on this type of paper than it would be on some of the other papers I use because this is 100% cotton, because it's more thirsty. And it, it bleeds more evenly, if that makes any sense. And sometimes you might want that. And sometimes you might not. It's just playing around. I mean, I know for me, this was a hard paper to get used to because I was using the cheapy papers, which, you know, I find. I don't know why people have to, some people on this YouTube cha channel is backlash the cheap paper, but not everybody can afford $5 sheet paper. And some of the best things I've ever created have been on the cheap paper that have turned into a whole slew of licensing products. So kudos to the cheap paper. So I'm adding down some flowers down here. Bring a couple of petals down in here. Like a small one. I'll add the yellow in a bit. Oh, it feels like it's missing anything. Let's see. Over here, maybe. No, I think I'm going to add another color. This one ended up being a little too bright pink, but that's okay. You, because this is more coral. We'll add some yellows. Change it up a bit. Let's see. What's a good spot for it? Over here, maybe. You can do paintings that are multicolors. It's just just a little tricky to do that because um, it could look like craziness. So you're gonna add a little. Did you see the yellow on the bottom? Probably not. Okay, there it is. Yellow here and yellow here. And go like that. Now I'll add stem to that. Get some brown. Change it from the green. If it bleeds into it, that's okay. Like I said, it doesn't have to be so serious. You want to have fun when you're painting. You don't have to make it perfect. Some of the best happy accidents make the best paintings. Now I'm going to add a little brownish yellow. To give these little stamens kind of a depth of them because they're looking a little flat. Kind of always adding with watercolor. Okay. Down here. 
decided to add on over here. There seems like a little hole right here, which I don't like. So what should I do? I should add some color. <laughs> this would be where the stems would be. Oh, led to that, just kind of get that out of there. Not so much a hole anymore. Like I said before in some of the videos, you want to step back. If you can step back, um, use your phone camera. It helps you see things better. You know, that always works for me. I have to start doing some more videos again with the liner brush. That's a fun brush I used to use in some of my live uh, Instagram videos. Mm, I think I need one more thing over here. I feel like it's missing something over here. Maybe that was a big green blob mistake. So I'll take my paper towel. Oh, I'll get the paper towel out of here. <laughs> you can dab it. See, and take away that paint. And then we can go on top of that. And something serious. That makes more sense since I get a little carried away with my brush. It wasn't making sense, was it? But that's okay. what it's all about playing around with the color so now I'm getting even darker red look at that just keeps adding more dimension pull out some lines you don't want to do it everywhere just here and there And a little bit on the edge. There is a beautiful artist who's no longer alive, um, but they had she had a resurgence with some of the manufacturers I work with. Her name is Vera, V E R A. Her scars from the fifties are fantastic. I love that look, and these kind of have that feel. These flowers, just a loose, painterly look to them you can do realistic flowers it's just not my thing um, there are people who are amazing at it and you know I don't want to compete with them <laughs> but all over Instagram I see it every day some of these people phenomenal My style is not like that. So now I really feel like I killed it with this bright pink. So let's just turn that, try and turn that bright pink into a red. Because it doesn't seem to match the color scheme. You could plan out your colors ahead of time. You've, you're stuck in what kind of color palette. You can go on Pinterest and type in... Um, trend color palettes 
you know, they, you take, they take it from fashion, home decor, trend palettes. It's very easy to find. Some brown in here. And that little guy needs a little yellow in the center. And I think we're pretty much done. I'll add a little more here. Yeah, a little bit darker in the center. And uh, that is going to be it, my friends. I hope you enjoy this. If you enjoy this, please like, subscribe, share. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you know when my next video is up. I do a lot of live real-time type of videos. Um, I will put some ones that aren't like that in there, but generally you're going to hear my voice and teach you how to do it. So have a great weekend and happy Floral Friday. Mm -hmm.